Take a look at this everyone. We have a busted culvert pipe somewhere causing a pretty big flood. This same pipe was busted last year. I doubt it was even replaced. That's why most of its capacity is cut. The drainage ditch is still a little bit frozen. Still got a lot of snow in there melting. So this is the pipe that we're driving over right now. We put some pieces of wood on either side of it to stop it from sinking when it was installed. All right, everyone, we're coming up to another issue in the road. And this section of road has, it looks like more moose tracks than recent people tracks. Right here, we got a pretty big amount of water going across. Where would our culvert pipe be? Somebody else has already flagged this one a lot. All right, I know where the pipe is. I've unblocked it before. So, this is one we can just pull up on. And the reason it's not working, it's installed extremely high. It is damaged to an extent. Definitely been hit by the snow plow a bunch of times. All they have to do is raise up where it's crossing and it would just immediately start going in that pipe. But that pipe, I would say, needs to be replaced. It's already starting to crumble despite its diameter not being crushed. Yeah, this part of the road I just dro drove over, that also needs to be filled in. Because look at this, we're, we're about to drive over a bridge right now. But the water in the river is so high, it just can't fit under the bridge. So that's why it's going down the drainage ditch and crossing. I just pulled over right here and I'm going to put up some marking ribbons so they know there's an issue at this spot. I, I just pulled up here because I was wondering, why does the water appear to be going in the culvert so slow, but it's coming out so fast? Got out and looked, there's two pipes. This pipe is just about open. That pipe right there barely has anything in it, not because anything's blocking on the that side. It's the other side, whether it be the grader coming by, something pushed the giant rock retaining wall. There's a rock there that must weigh at least 500 pounds that moved, and based on the growth, this pipe here has been blocked an extremely long time, and this little bit here was 100% put there by the grader. And this side here, has been crushed by an excavator and has its capacity cut by that. What do you guys think of my little setup in here? I'm eating some tomatoes, got a smoothie right here, got four of my eight gas cans in the front seat with me, down in that crack is my garbage can, just throw whatever down there, I'll collect it later on. Got some hand sanitizer, got this to use with the hand sanitizer, it works good to just wipe things off your hands when you get back in. This section of road is getting really bad. It rocks the car back and forth. These potholes are just gonna keep getting worse. Did you see that crumpled culvert we just went over? Look at all this. This road is getting destroyed. This time of year, they're stockpiling all the logs. No log trucks are coming down here for a little while until mud season is done. Right here, looks like a big log that fell off one of the trucks when they were still bringing them. You can tell by the, whoa, there's some big humps and frost heaves still here. This time of year, these roads start falling apart. And as soon as it starts getting dry, they'll grade it and it'll be nice and smooth for summer. But every rainstorm creates potholes. That pipe is fine. That one has always tricked me in the past. I always stop at it and there's never anything there. It looks like a bunch of water on the other side, but the pipe is barely down in it. This section of road, you see, they regraded this whole area last year. Very nice with drainable fill. That's why there's not as many issues. Every time we get down into one of these low spots, we're gonna have a bunch of issues with mud. I just had to get out and show you this section of road. What exactly causes something like this? See that? They're really in there, I can't even make them budge. But anyways, at some point in time, 
this road was so muddy and they wanted to get their trucks through here so they put a whole bunch of wooden timbers down and they just covered it up with some gravel but now during the winter time especially now in the spring all the freeze and thaw cycles every freeze and thaw cycle it drives things culverts rocks and these wooden timbers up so now all these are probably going to have to be removed or put more fill over the top. You see, when it first started, because this goes for a pretty long time, I was just seeing cracking and all this. I thought this was still the actual frost heave itself, but no, they're wooden timbers being forced up out of the ground. On this section of the road, I really gotta watch my speed. This mud is becoming slippery. Probably in about a half an hour, we're gonna go to an area that's very notorious for becoming horrible with mud. May even have to turn around, but we'll see how bad it becomes. I don't think we're gonna see a blockage here, but I just had to get out and observe the really big blast of water on the other side. This is one really big pipe. The water's going in so fast, and as the water's passing through the pipe, it's really speeding up. This is what I just saw on the other side. I really like this rock. That's a really nice flat piece. Hold it, backing up. We just saw something that could be a potential blockage. All right, a little bit further. Here we are. Someone even put a ribbon out there on both sides of this pipe. Maybe there's an issue. I can't pull over this far. Still not blocking the road though, and there's no one out here. If I try to pull over snug against the snowbank, I'm gonna probably get stuck. So basically the three, four feet next to the snowbank are very soft, and the vehicle was sinking into it. I just stopped here because I just wanted to see, why is that flagged? Why is that ribbon out there? It's very cool though, I definitely wanna take a look. You see the entrance of this pipe is under the snowbank. We can't see it. Doesn't look like it's having an issue at all though, but I am seeing something really cool. Everything's coming out of there just fine. That's a pretty big plastic pipe. I love the aeration. Wow, there's two of them. Nice aeration. You see how the water is kind of yellowish? It kind of looks like pee. The reason it looks like pee is because there's a lot of rotten wood and leaves mixed into it. I'm hoping I don't sink super deep through the snowbank into a flooded ditch. But I'm coming out here because you see where they have flagged? They might be planning on reopening this for logging. This is an old abandoned road. I can tell by the grade. And what they have marked here is a culvert pipe. It doesn't look like it has a problem, but I want to come visit the abandoned pipe. Right over here where their ribbons are, I see water coming up out of the ground. There's a culvert pipe right here. Just want to know what type it is from back then. What do you guys think? Is it going to be a, probably a metal one back in these days? But look at this, you can't even tell it's really a road other than it being a nice flat spot. For a minute I thought it may have been a train track. It kind of looked like it at first. Because there are train tracks abandoned out here in the woods, believe it or not. Here is this old abandoned drainage ditch, still working nice. And look at the water. There is a little bit of a blockage on that pipe, but nothing severe. They're gonna be reopening this. They're gonna remove all these trees that are falling over. That's unfortunate, we don't get to see what kind of pipe it is. Still a good amount of snow out here for May. Because of the spring thaw and all the snow melting, I bet this is gonna be beautiful off this bridge. Let me drive over it slow and show you the river. Wow, the water is pretty high. You definitely can't see the rocky river bottom like you can in the summertime sometimes. Nice. Wow, look at the rapids out the other side. Wow! 
Got a really good flow coming out of this pipe. That's a metal pipe. Metal pipes are better. This one's not even deep in the ground and it's not crushed and you can tell it's extremely old. Just look at the amount of water coming down the ditch. A lot of melt water. You can see that whirlpool there sucking pretty hard. It looks like we have a couple branches down in there, but really not much of anything. Oh. We just made it slurp a little bit. Yeah, there's really not anything blocking that. But now I'm noticing there's, it looks like a permanent stream. I thought this was just drainage. Nice. Looks like, a, is this a, mo, a mulberry bush? Wow, look at this. The buds haven't even opened. I just transplanted one of these from the woods at my house into the yard and it's already got leaves, balls of leaves all over it. As we are driving down the road, you see here's another area with a good amount of water just clogged up. The ditch needs to be dug out a little bit for it can get down to the next pipe. And you see there's more boards in the road. All right, everyone, I just pulled over again because right here looks like, is this supposed to be a pipe coming out? Got a lot of leaking groundwater coming right out of the road along with, you see this all needs to be dug out. The ditch is going around and eroding the road. Look at all the green slime already started for the year. You able to see it at this angle? Really nice green slime. Look at that. This is the kind of stuff ducks love to eat. That must have started forming during the warmer weather last week. Because last night we had a pretty big frost. Alright, since it didn't look like a culvert up there or completely unnoticeable, now I stopped at the bottom of the hill to take a look at this. Here's another culvert pipe. This one is open good enough. I'm seeing some issues here. This pipe I think is just very undersized. Might not be able to handle it. Or, no, that's not the issue. I thought maybe it was backing up into the road and that's why it was trickling across causing this erosion. No, it looks like the water that lands in the road just can't get to the ditch and get through the pipe. It's just turning into a pond here coming down both of the hills. It's just collecting. And it's not able to go through the pipe. But this pipe is also a piece of junk. It looks like it needs to be replaced. Look how it's just coming out of there in little geysers. Yeah, this pipe's already marked. Needs to be replaced. So for a while now, I've been driving through this road. It feels like I'm driving through wet concrete. It's starting to get muddy in this area despite having a good drainage ditch. Just gotta keep it slow, because you don't wanna swerve, because if you swerve over to either side of the road, even though it looks flat, that's the most likely part to sink and get stuck. Oh, giant rock right there. Had to go around, oh, I'm not the only one to go around that rock. That was a tall one. Look at this inside the road. What's all this junk? I'm just gonna stop for a minute. Someone else's track is right here. I'm gonna pull over as far as that, just for a moment. What do you think? There's moose tracks everywhere. Do you think somebody hit an animal? That I see broken pieces of car everywhere. I see a mirror. Is that a... That's not a windshield, that is a side window. You can see right here where the attachment goes to roll it up and down for the motor. So maybe an animal ran into the side of someone's car or someone just sideswiped it. What do you think? Usually out in these roads, moose are not a problem. Moose walk really slow. Yes, there could be one standing around a corner and they're a dark animal. But usually if you hit something on one of these roads, it's usually going to be a deer. Deer literally think your vehicle's a predator and they'll race it and try to jump in front of it to confuse you. 
but that's when you hit them. Deer are skittish. That's why they jump around a lot and they'll run right in front of you. And that's why you hit deer so often. You know, I learned many states have a likelihood of hitting a deer. The most extreme case was one in a 25 chance. What I, what I mean to say, one out of every 25 people will hit a deer in that year. Every state has at least one in 40. But a moose, sometimes they're stubborn. You can pull right up to them and they won't move out of the way. But they're always slow walkers. They are unlikely to just jump out in front of you unless something else scared them. All right, everyone, I just stopped in this section of road to see what's up. See if there's a blockage or just about at capacity. So right here, I've been here in the past. Doesn't look like there's a blockage at the moment. There's two pipes right here. That one's got a whirlpool forming on top of it. This right here is the primary flow. Secondary flow is a bit higher. And those probably have so much current sucking into them. If you guys remember, this is the same culvert pipe I did this like a year or so ago. Uh, I don't know if you heard it, but I could hear a few knocks. It sucked the piece of rock right through. This is some really good shale rock. You can actually do some rock skipping out here. Fail. This might be a good piece to skip. Well, did it once. In the other side of the road. Here's where the water's blasting out. Look at all those suds. That's all rotting organic material. As it's agitated, it blows up into bubbles. You can see there's a bunch of frozen stuff from last night when it got down really cold. The last time I came through this section of road, there was a gigantic towering pile of logs. I wonder if these logs were left behind because they were buried under the snow and they couldn't see it when loading the trucks. So what they did was they piled a whole bunch of them into the drainage ditch to make the drainage ditch even with the hill and they had a whole bunch of logs stacked on it going the other way with the cuts facing the road like that one right there. A good example is see this pile right here, they had another pile crossing on top of it, if you know what I mean. I wonder if they left that behind and I see a destroyed culvert pipe underneath it. Right here you can tell water's been crossing a lot, causing erosion. And at this pink ribbon I'm assuming there's another pipe and by the way it is. It looks like this pipe is also destroyed. Let's get out and look at it for a moment. That's a pretty fresh moose track. It's a little bit of a smaller moose. Some of their moose tracks are much bigger than my foot. So there's the water coming out. You see this pipe has a major issue with silt washing into it. Look at this giant sandbar. That's kind of... It's not in the pipe because it's blasting, but that could cause problems over time, especially when grass starts growing on top of it. Now here's where it's coming in on the other side. Honestly, the pipe, it might not look that bad. Let's roll up my sleeves. We do have a good amount of current going in there. Yeah. Not horrible, just needs a little bit of excavation, I'd say. You know, everyone, today's high temperature was supposed to be like 60. I can already tell we're not gonna get close to that. Right now, we're at 35 outside. In fact, it's gone down since I woke up this morning. And right now we're getting into a couple light flurries of snow. This road is getting kind of bad, but I have seen it way worse in years past. Especially the years when they still run the trucks through this. But this year, they are not running any big rigs until this dries up. It's getting pretty muddy around some of these corners. Wow. Hear all that banging around? Something in the suspension in the back of the car definitely broke yesterday. I don't know what it is, can't figure it out, but... Driving ability isn't any different, it's just super loud and I'll have to jack the car up as soon as I get home and I'll just pressure wash it all off. I mentioned a, like a month ago, 
I was thinking about getting a pressure washer. I finally bought one, a electric one, a 1800 PSI made by Caterpillar, and it's had great reviews, so I'm gonna go ahead and give that a try. Wow, you know what I just ran over in the road? A big pile of red moose poops. This time of year, moose poops are bright red because they're eating the buds off the maple trees. Right here is a whole bunch of moose poops. These ones are not as red, but they got that little reddish tint. You see, they're only gonna get redder as the season goes on. The buds are barely even open yet this time of year. I just stopped at this pipe. This must be a baby moose. Those are much smaller. Just wanted to see this pipe. Ooh, that rock's moving a lot. So, there's like nothing in here. But this is preventative maintenance. More and more junk will just collect against that. That's a brand new pipe. And look at that. This logging company is smart. Putting in a metal pipe. They either never went over to plastic or they learned their lesson about plastic pipes. A plastic pipe will easily get crushed. Even if a big rig sinks here two feet into the mud and goes bump bump over that, It'll probably just slightly dent it. If it was plastic, it would be absolutely destroyed. And a plastic and metal pipe are almost the same price. But a lot of people these days are going with the plastic one because the manufacturer says it lasts 70 years. A metal one will rust through completely. It depends on conditions. If it just has water going through it, it can last potentially over 50 years. But out here, the freeze and thaw cycles play a big role all the gravel and rocks getting sent through it, rubbing away the galvanization, bringing it down to pure metal, deteriorates faster. On the bright side, there's no road salt out here. At least this culvert, no matter what, will get about two or three decades of service. We have a pretty big flood in the road here. Look at this. And you can tell since the last person drove through it, it froze up last night when it was really cold. Oh, I can feel the road is very soft near that. Wow. I actually have to stop and show you this. I have no idea where the culvert pipe is involved in this, but I want to show you the erosion that it caused because that was definitely flowing over the road hard. The color of this weird river foam that kind of froze up on the top is weird. This whole area is flooded. None of the trees are dying or drowning, meaning it hasn't been going on for long, and I can tell you it hasn't been going on for long. I travel this road a good 50 times a year doing this inspection. Never seen it like this. Is this frazzle ice? Almost. The layer of ice is so thin, you can look at that, I'm pushing ripples through the whole thing. So water was definitely crossing here. They probably sent the grader out this year to fix it. They had to have. I can see right here, recently water's been passing over. Look at the gush that must have been coming through here. Just take a look at this. All this sediment it brought down. So right here is probably our pipe, right? No, I don't even see a culvert pipe here. Although it looks like something. I think this may all, all just be erosion. Let's go on and jump down there. One, two, three, jump down. No culvert pipe. The culvert is obviously somewhere else. This is just from a giant blast coming through. Look at that rock, that's so cool. Look how I can just, no? If I had a special tool, you can see I could easily snap that into a bunch of spots. A lot of shale out here. So where's the culvert actually supposed to be? I just walked up the road a couple hundred feet beyond that, found nothing. The land started going back up. So maybe it's down this way a little bit since the swamp is still pretty low. Maybe the pipe is right here somewhere, I'm thinking. I spent about 25 minutes here trying to figure this one out. Just can't. The best time to inspect for culverts and locate them is 
right when the snow banks are gone before the trees grow leaves. That's the best time to inspect. Oh my gosh, I don't even think we can go any further on this road. But thankfully I know a way around. I'm gonna backtrack about 10 miles and there's a loop, it's gonna take an hour, but I can get around to the other side of this and keep going on my route. I got a roll of tagging ribbon. I'm gonna have to put it up 100%. Yeah, this must have just collapsed. Look at some of these tracks. That couldn't have been more than a couple days ago. Just collapsed. This is what happens when culverts aren't properly maintained. Look at that. This is like the worst example I've ever seen. Do you see why this happened? I've said this so many times that I'm gonna make a separate video of this as an example. Look at the bottom of the pipe completely gone, rusted out. As water was blasting through it, it kept eroding it, unseen sinkholes. Look at that. This is one of the worst I've seen, and nobody else knows it's here. It's not marked one bit. Literally, I don't think anybody's going across this. 99% of the logging trucks would not make it across this. None of the pickup trucks, they're gonna get probably get stuck going over this. Oh my gosh. Wow, everyone, that is one deep void. I don't know if you can tell, this is over three feet deep. And if I pulled within a couple feet of this, it's just gonna collapse. Wow. And look at this busted joint down there in the middle. So I just marked all the way across. If somebody wants a chance going through part of that, they can, we're gonna mark or we're gonna go all the way around. I did what I could. Hopefully this saves somebody coming down here in the middle of the night because this road is in pretty good shape in this area. So some guys are gonna be going 50 miles an hour in the middle of the night and hopefully this ribbon saves someone from ripping an axle off. Wow, these past couple days have been, we've been marking so much stuff. I've already gone through six rolls of marking tape and I only have one left. So I have to use the next one pretty sparingly. All right, we gotta back out of here. This is a pretty bad one. So that was interesting to see. Now we have a massive detour on our hands to get around that. You know, roads like this, when you're driving through a lot of mud constantly like this, you're definitely not gonna get the MPG you get on a paved road. It always goes right in the toilet once you start going through mud. That's a lot of strain keeping the wheels moving through that stuff. I've already lost three MPG today and it's still steadily dropping. All right, everyone, we finally got to the interchange. We go up this road and we should be to the other side of where I put the ribbon across the road. In these conditions, it may actually take up to two hours. I have no idea what I'm gonna encounter. Like this, look at this. Oh my gosh. If I can't go down this road and it doesn't look like I can because of this gigantic washout, Ah, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to go through this either. Look at this huge washout. I'm gonna step out and give this a little bit of marking. I don't wanna waste so much ribbon going across again. I'm gonna find a couple sticks, jam them into the road with a few ribbons. All right, so if we can't go down this road, and I, there's, there's a small bypass which can bypass this again in like 10 minutes, but that is currently blocked with too much snow. Now we have just turned into like a four hour detour. It's gonna take all day to get around there, but we're gonna do it. We're just gonna step out for a minute. Let me show you what's going on. It doesn't matter. I can park right here in the middle of the road. Nobody can possibly, and this is just a gigantic island with ramps so traffic can flow more smoothly. This right here is another example of why maintaining drainage ditches is so important. Just last year, this whole ditch was dug out. See this, the excavator grabbed it and put it up there. See that? Beautifully done ditch. And over here on the other side, not that bad of a ditch. This I can tell was recently dug, 
but they stopped right here. If they would have kept going with this ditch for just a hundred more feet last year, this wouldn't have happened. It all would have been able to go down this ditch into the proper culvert. But because the ditch is so severely filled in, it was just trickling on the edge of the road and the water didn't know how to get back there. So it just went across the road, digging deeper and deeper. What I'm evaluating right now is the potential of myself being able to come through here. Now, I can definitely see a couple people did a three-point turn right here and went right back. They did not want to deal with this. But right here I can see somebody with a truck easily was able to go through this. So what I'm thinking I might actually be able to do, I'm going to get my rake out and I'm going to eat away at these edges and try to make a ramp. Then I'm going to gun it through this. Yeah, because I really don't want to spend a, a four hours working on a detour. And once I'm on this side, hopefully there's no more things. Then I don't have to come back here again. Look how deep the crevice gets. It's almost two feet deep, this part of the crevice, going back into the ditch. You know, I was just out there. It doesn't even look as bad as it looks. I hope I don't get stuck. It's not like, it's not very soft. I want to get out one more time and just look over a little bit. I want to check that out. It's a little bit soft to the right, but I think I can get through that. I think I can. Okay, thankfully if something does happen, I can go on a little walk. Less than two miles away, there is a ranger station. Uh, are we bottoming out? I just want to look to see if I should go any further or not. I just want to see how bad it is. I know I'm not stuck and I can back up. We didn't bottom out on everything. I just hit a rock. Turn the wheel a lot, maybe. Damn it. Stupid, stupid traction control. Why did you cut me out? Oh, we got through it. That was not a problem at all. But you gotta be careful on these roads. That, was, thankfully, was rocky and still pretty solid. Some of these, it's like glue. Your car will stick in it so easily. All right, so we did pretty good. I just saved myself four hours by evaluating that instead of just going around. Look at this little stream. This is starting to eat away at the road. Same reason as back there. The drainage ditch needs to be dug deeper. A big storm, this would push out. All right, here's another area. You can tell water's been gushing up across the road. Some kind of pipe is clogged. I'm guessing it's down here. Yeah, I can see some flowing water where the pipe is. Maybe we can get out and look at what's going on. As soon as I get back out near a store, I, I don't plan on going back out in a signal or any kind of city area for at least a couple more days, but I need to pick up another dozen rolls of marking tape some orange spray paint and a couple more caution signs because it's good to put a sign up like back there where you saw me put the ribbon across the road it's good to have signs to put up at that interchange saying this road is blocked off this many miles as I recorded on my car you just record how many miles back that was and you write on the sign the road is impassable after that was about eight so this road needs to be built up a little bit but not a huge problem at the moment. This culvert pipe looks like the frost has brought it up quite a bunch. There are two culverts here. That rock cannot be moved. There's just a little bit of stuff there. Well, just a little bit of stuff can diminish the quality so much. Yeah, these culverts, they better replace these. These are very heavy duty 
cast iron pipes. These are not corrugated at all. Very heavy duty pipes right here. Look at this beautiful road. It lets you know how vast the wilderness is out here. And there's a nice bridge at the bottom. This time of year, a section of road like this can be pretty dangerous. I just drove through it. You see all these cracks right here? Just drove through this. See, it held my car going over it pretty fast. No, that's actually my track. But, bunch of cars, like if I was being followed by a couple dozen other people, this is going to go down very fast. What we got here is melting frost heaves underneath. You see? Look at the water. The water is trickling at a pretty good rate. But where is it coming from? Where is this water coming from to be able to trickle like that? It's literally being forced up out of the ground, active ground water. There's most likely bedrock right below the surface. And even though we're elevated higher than the ditch, this water is being forced from a higher place. And there's some kind of crack pushing it up here. All these higher spots you see are lifted are from little springs of water like this. During the winter, as it leaks, it freezes, building up underneath here as a giant frozen block. And as it thaws, you could be driving right where I am and suddenly sink into a dry road because of a melting frost heave. And as they melt unevenly, it creates these cracks and dips all over the place. There was a pretty big one right there. I'm just going to zoom in up there. Maybe you can see it. There's a pretty big one going on. See that cardboard box? Somebody spray painted it red, warning you to watch out. This area of the road is frost heaves galore. Gotta watch where I'm driving and be careful also where I stop. This area is pretty well built up. I just stopped right here to show you this area, which is pretty interesting. So deep in the woods like this, we are now about 80 miles away from any town. It would not be cost effective to drive good gravel out here. When the logging company has free stuff here, it's not exactly gravel, it is shale rock. Some pieces can be sharp. That's why if you come out here with bald tires or just junk tires in general, Lots of people have complained that they get flats because of this. I have never got a flat out here because of road conditions ever. I have got two flat tires in the four years of traveling out here. Between those four years, I have probably traveled at least 60,000 miles on only these dirt roads. The two flat tires both times were a nail. What's the chance of that in the middle of nowhere? But it did happen. This is kind of cool. This is a quarry come in here with the excavator and that they don't even have to use a jackhammer i see the guys using just the teeth on the bucket this stuff is so brittle and shatters most of this they literally just break up with the bucket of the excavator but this looks really cool the water's blue pretty clear and they put it up here in the big piles load it into dump trucks and they dump it in all those eroded areas whenever it's needed after a couple years the road really improves Year one, it's a very rocky, bumpy area. And right across the road is another quarry. I just parked my car next to a bunch more piles of it that they're stockpiling. This is a quarry they haven't used in a few years. And now it's turning into just a wildlife pond. Something eventually will move in here. You see over on the edge where they stopped smashing it there's still a lot in there if they were ever to continue it I'm sure they will someday the interesting thing about shale rock is from there to here it's a totally different color or maybe it's just the soil mixed in with it but here's another ginormous pile can you tell as I'm walking around there's actually flurries weatherman said it was gonna be 60 degrees we got up earlier to 37 and it's just been dropping as the day goes on. It's still pretty chilly out, but I don't mind. I'd prefer this over summer anytime. Wow, look at these 
little quarry pools. Can you see how green this one is? It's like sulfur water. Something you'd see out in the west. It's really cool. Here's something else I want to show. They just did a lot of logging there over the past month. The water, for whatever reason, was not able to get in this ditch. I can't see if it's just blocked with snow and ice or if it's completely filled in. Regardless, you can see all these multiple holes right here where water was pouring back out into the road, coming down here. As it gains speed, you see the erosion is getting worse and worse. And then eventually here, it found a way to get back into the ditch. And as it was going in the, around that corner, going back in the ditch, that's when it started really digging pretty hard. Yeah, that's all solid. This stopped a while ago. So I'm trying to figure out, is there still water trickling underneath here? Did it eventually melt its way through? Is that why this stopped? Or is it because it's just a cooler day and not as much is melting? Or is it because most of the snow is already gone? This area has a pretty good snowpack. See this little circle here? That is likely, there's probably a rock there that's slightly pushed up, dropped back down, took some soil with it. So, the pipe is right there, doesn't have any problem. Based on the water here, yes, the ditch is definitely working underneath this. That right there just recently collapsed. Give it a day, all that will melt out of the way. What do we have here? Why were these logs left behind? What kind of pest is this, you guys think? It might just be carpenter ants. Carpenter ants usually eat the softer wood in the center of the tree, making it hollow. Maybe carpenter ants, probably. See this? Up here in the main north woods, we do have um, emerald ash borer. It's not widespread yet, but it is slowly spreading. That's why loggers leave any infected trees behind just in case. And it looks like See all this stuff in there? It looks like maybe a bird tried to build a nest. This tree was very healthy. Look at the amount of sap it was producing to protect itself from those holes. Right here is where the water was going across the road when it was flowing a bit more. And you see some moose tracks to the bottom left. This ditch right here has more water than it's supposed to have. I like what the logging company did here. A lot of the companies out here don't end up doing this. I think you can see the flurries now. It's starting to snow a little bit more. You make a wall of rocks. You can also use a couple bales of hay with pieces of rebar or sticks. It stops all the sediment from going down and filling the pipe because this is, a, I can tell, is a pretty new ditch. Didn't get the chance to grow grass and hold everything together yet. And look at this brand new culvert pipe installed only about eight months ago, already crumpling getting crushed all around it. Look at this. Just don't want to use plastic. Less than a year of service and it's already in need of replacement. This is the road in the best condition yet so far. I've been traveling at a consistent 40 miles an hour and that's almost the speed limit. The speed limit on this road is 45. Summertime, once these roads are dry and the mud is gone, you can drive extremely fast on these roads. But in the summer, you'll typically be making a giant dust storm. I just stopped here because there's a backup of water, enough where that it's going down the drainage ditch to the next pipe. Just want to see what's up. All right, this can definitely be improved. This is a brand new pipe. I saw them put it in less than two years ago. So what's going on is the grader caused this. When the grader was fixing the road, it dumped a bunch of rocks down here, and that's taking capacity a tiny little bit. No, I am wrong. I am very close to it. It's within a couple hundred feet, the new pipe. This pipe is not new by any means. No, 
The rocks aren't doing that much. The pipe is literally crushed on the bottom, so it's flat, giving the appearance of a clog. So the new one is probably right there, I'm thinking of. I haven't showed you guys one of these in a while, and here's a pretty big one and I wanna show you. See this gigantic crack in the road? Do you know what causes this? One of two things. Reason number one is the entire road froze solid in the winter, and when water freezes, it expands. Now that it's thawing, it has contracted, leaving this gigantic crack. Reason number two can be the top of the road, just the top couple inches or so freezes, and as it's cold, it freezes deeper and deeper, and because this is already frozen, and the water below it's trying to freeze, and it expands. It has nowhere to expand, so it kind of pushes apart like the plates in the earth. It's kind of cool. That'll disappear after a while, people running it over. Rainstorms will make it disappear, but it looks kind of cool. All right, this place is still very cold. I just turned around twice because I wanted to read a sign I went by just in case it meant something important. You see right here, I pulled over. I thought I was going to sink deep because I started sliding. Then I noticed I only sunk two inches because the road is still frozen under there in this area. This area is still very frozen. Guess what? I have officially not seen another human in two days. Haven't passed a single car, haven't seen a single person even driving by the logging camps. Not a single person in two days. It's kind of amazing. Look at this. They got a giant stockpile of logs here. They're just waiting for the road to become solid enough for the big trucks to come out. Look at it all. And there's a couple more piles really far down the road I see coming. Weird. I don't really see any log skid trails. It looks like they're only cutting down trees within 50 feet of the road. Oh, no, we just went by a log skid trail. But they're also cutting down the trees on the edges of the road because they don't want them hanging in the road. Also, not as many trees will fall on the road now since the tree line is so far back. Maybe making room to do drainage ditch work or something. Look at this. Got a good amount of erosion there. Nothing we can't go through without a problem. But it still looks like... Whoa. I want to back up. Should not have gone over to the side. The side of the road is soft. So we're going to have to hit this more straight on. That front right wheel just sunk awfully deep into the mud. Boom. And we're going to have to drive through this again on the way back. It's not a big deal. Not at all. It, I barely even felt that driving over it. This is the only road back out of here unless I drove through Canada. All right, before we keep heading on our way, I just turned onto the road that I had to turn around at, that major washout. We, I just want to see how far it is. I'm going to measure the amount of miles, just like I did on the other side. I don't have another sign that I can put up, but I am going to make one. I have a Sharpie, and I have some bright orange duct tape that I can put around a piece of cardboard. It'll hold up for a couple rainstorms, hopefully until they fix it. But if you pass any little warning sign on these roads, you better read it because you might get yourself into trouble. This road so far is in very good shape. Right now I'm traveling 45 miles an hour without a problem. You can see how that issue in the road could be dangerous if it wasn't marked, especially at night. The road is in good enough shape that I'm traveling fast. Wow, it is a good thing that I marked this. From here, you cannot see that the road opened up. And it literally would be too late at those high speeds to see this. You saw that? I probably would have hit it myself if it wasn't marked. I was going so fast. All right, so I just came back here just to turn around. And now I'm going to start recording miles back to the main intersection. Between this and the main intersection, there is a logging camp. But anyone going to the logging camp should know how many miles it is from the intersection. And this is just so it doesn't waste people's time. So I put a sign on the other side of it, which is about 8 miles. Now we're going to see how many miles we got here. This is definitely less. Alright, so I'm going to either use a piece of cardboard completely covered in duct tape and use some kind of nice stick I find on the way back to stick it on the edge of the road. Yeah, look at this. This is a bad one. 
I'm gonna see if I can find a stick here too to get this up a bit. That took me a while. Almost every single stick I picked up broke in my hand with no strict pressure at all. Just every single stick is just rotten out there. Finally found one that'll do the job, I think. Every single stick couldn't even put in the ground. I had to put in the crack. I want to make this even more noticeable. Put some pieces of this orange duct tape there too, make it more noticeable. Because the wind may flap it and stick to itself, each one of those is holding a little pebble. I'm gonna make this plastic thing into a sign. I feel like that's the best thing I have. I'm just in the woods right now looking for a good suitable stick. And I just found a tractor trailer tire. If I'm able to, I'm gonna roll it back to the road and it'll probably be a lot of fun. I thought it was longer, honestly, but no, we're going to go put this out on the road. You know, I think this is super noticeable, a lot more noticeable than it just being on a stick. That tire did us well. People will definitely notice that driving by and hopefully stop and read it. And the tire will maybe get picked up. On this section of road, now we have... A whole bunch of ripples here. Those are wooden timbers the logging company put in when the road was very soggy at some point. And frost heaves are now pushing the timbers up and those are gonna have to be removed when they grade it. There's a good amount of moose tracks and this right here, more wooden timbers coming out everywhere. I was in this section of road in the middle of winter, the dead of winter, a couple times actually. And every single time there was a snow bank here, taller than the car. Couldn't even see the swamp, but I knew it was here. This is at Beaver's secondary pond. Right up in there, there's a big beaver dam with their bigger pond. This time of year, this is not gonna be freezing solid again. It is on the way out. Last night, it got down to about 23 degrees. All the areas you see, this ice there and over there probably formed overnight but that'll probably be gone by the afternoon and it's we're going through some fluctuations but this is already May 4th and look at this do we have anything we really don't have any blockage there's really not much there there's a little bit at the bottom you can see the beavers kind of started it so we don't even need to get the rake out or anything for this We definitely increased flow just by kicking it over like this. Now this grate, it's here for the beavers. Don't build it in the middle of the pipe because that would be much more difficult to be unclogging if it was in the middle of the pipe. But there's really not a big deal here. The pipe just can't really handle it. I'd say the debris there is blocking less than 10%. But those beavers are going to keep it up. We'll be back to this location. Maybe give it another month. We'll come here in June as soon as the trees start growing leaves. A lot of people don't believe me how cold parts of northern Maine can actually be. Personally, my house, which is like a couple hours south of here, I'm already starting to get trees budding with leaves. But up here, there's really don't see many trees budding. They're starting to, you can see them starting to turn a tint of red. They're getting ready, but up here, the trees are not full until the middle of June at least. Even I come up here in another month, they'll just be starting to grow leaves. Despite it already being May, this maple syrup farm in the middle of the woods is still producing. We're still getting down pretty cold every night. Cool. On the side of the road, there are so many free Christmas trees. Because a logging company doesn't want the very top of the tree. The girth isn't enough so they just leave them everywhere. There's literally dozens of free Christmas trees. You see right here, there's some active logging going on. No trucks bringing it out with all the mud, but they are gathering up some more stuff. Yep, 
into some pretty good mud right here now. My gosh do you see what's standing in the road up there it's a moose he is gonna dart any moment he is about to dart and run away do you see that moose we have a big moose right there maybe he'll stay oh no he's running or she's running look at that big old moose This is another collapsing culvert, but doesn't seem that bad. A lot of other people have ran it over without sinking. That one didn't just cave in all at once. All right, everyone, I'm stopping right now for a little lunch break. Gonna have this and get back on the road in a bit. Check it out. This old rustic cabin looks so cool. Out here in the middle of the woods. So I stopped here to look at that hole in the road, but then I noticed there's a brand new culvert here with this nice shale rock that they got from one of the quarries. And I noticed this is one of the nicest drainage ditches I've seen out here. See the water pouring on in? Very nice ditch. They dug it really far down there. This is the road for the excavator to travel on. Because without that, I bet this whole area used to flood a lot. I just stopped to look at the hole and I saw that. Yeah, right here. Good amount of erosion. This ditch needs to be dug out. This is caused by the ditch. Couldn't handle the water, so a lot of it was in the road. And this is the new part they just dug out with this project where it re-entered. Got a spider friend right there. I wonder if he's trying to eat those mites or if he's stuck. Not sure, but let's help the guy out. Get the spider off to the side, just in case he was stuck, but there are little mites everywhere. <clears throat> so I stopped right here to show this drainage ditch. First off, this is kind of cool. That's just coming right out of the ground. It's not even coming down the hill. So the drainage ditch here, this whole road was redone last year. The road didn't really have time to strengthen, grow grass on the edge of it. So both sides of it here are kind of falling apart. And look at this. This, like I said earlier, was put here to, to slow it down so silt doesn't get down into the pipe and down into the woods. But as you can see, water hitting it just undermined the whole dam. See this? Just keeps falling in. Don't want to pull over too much on this road. The worst of the damage is on this side. Look at all this erosion. The ditch is like three times as wide as it's supposed to be.
Looks like a rock is trying to come up there where those cracks are. Just stopped here to look at this pipe. It's probably nothing. Another rock right there trying to come out. I just wanted to stop, see if there's a blockage. There is a little bit of a blockage, matter of fact. Look at that. That just increased flow a little bit. But this is absolutely beautiful, this place here. Look at all the moss and little pine trees growing in the swamp. All the ones that are bald for the winter are called tamaracks. They are not evergreens. They lose all their needles. Beautiful swamp. All right, I didn't see this until I was within 10 feet of hitting it. Hit the stop blocks awfully hard. Take a look at this one. It sounded like I bottomed out, but I don't think it's possible. I think it was just the stop blocks running over this hole. Look at all that sediment washing down there. That's what those little dams are there to prevent. And also look at that, you see how dirty water just started entering down there? That might be from when I just ran it over real hard. Maybe some of it got knocked into the pipe. It's possible, is this pipe broken at all? All right, we're down here. Oh my gosh, it is. I knew it was gonna be broken just by seeing that slight blast of dirty water. Why do they continue to use plastic garbage? Look at that. By code, a pipe is supposed to be at least half its diameter deep. That's almost double its diameter, especially before it started sinking. But it is soft. What a piece of garbage. Plastic pipe garbage. And look at all the water that's backing up and having to go down to the next pipe. I do have a real hatred for those plastic culverts. They should all be made out of metal. And I just put some flags up on that. Slow down the next person who can't see it coming because it's invisible from the other direction. All right, we have a hole right here. I'm gonna put another flag up. This is a metal culvert, so I'm assuming it's rusted through. Nope, not rusted through but it's split right at the seam. Look at that. So this hole is not gonna really get much bigger. It might collapse a little bit, but at least it's working for the time being. This is right here is because the retaining wall kind of failed and now the water's just smashing into it. There are some rocks in there that should be moved out, but this whole thing needs to be replaced anyways. Big old hole. I actually am about to run out of flagging tape, but I do still have the duct tape I can wrap around the tree. It'll work just as well. I absolutely love traveling on these roads. I think it's hilarious how muddy the car is. Can't tell it what color it is. Can't read the license plates. And as soon as I go back on the public roads, I just think it's hilarious driving that around. All right, I marked the hole down there with that rock. And just a little bit down the road, we've come across a plastic pipe, which doesn't look like it's failing yet, but it's definitely up because a heavy truck ran it over. And based on this, it's gonna fail pretty soon. This is not a culvert pipe. This is leaking groundwater causing this erosion right here. And it may open up into a sinkhole. Right here we got some large timbers that they must have put in during mud season. There's a whole bunch of them. It looks like railroad tracks. There is not a culvert here. This is going down I was just wondering if this was a culvert. Sometimes they'll put wooden timbers on the either side of the culvert so they can install it and have trucks run over it immediately, but that doesn't seem to be the case. You know, especially with all the shadows of the tree, certain parts of the road being wet and dry, a lot of these frost heaves, you just can't see them until you're too close. And probably at least two dozen times today I've had to slam the brakes on and skid a lot like this that was not a bad one but 
you just can't see them coming. is still mostly frozen out in the lake. Ooh, some geese. I just came across another pretty big sinkhole here in the road. Take a look at that. Is it a culvert? Yep. There's definitely a culvert. This is a metal pipe and the bottom is starting to rust out. It doesn't honestly look that bad. Maybe this is another joint. But it collapsed right on top of it. You cannot see what's actually causing it. And this end of the pipe is completely under the snowbank. All right, everyone, this is pretty cool. Check out the flood waters here. We got this culvert blasting a whole ton. Let's look at the opening. Wow, Capac the capacity's cut a lot. Look at that gigantic rock. Probably weighs more than 500 pounds. Just fell right on in. But if we walk a little bit further down the swamp, there's another massive culvert right here. Look at all the water moving over towards it. The road is very soft where I'm walking. Yet again, the entire retaining wall looks like it kind of fell in, huh? Maybe, maybe we can unclog some of that one. Look where it's coming out. Right there. Ooh, there's two of them. Didn't even notice, these two are smaller than that first one. But check out the water coming out of this pipe. Oh wow, there's multiple pipes. Giant pipe with a log stuck in it. Another giant one. Wow, this is some powerful water going in there. Yeah, this looks like an old gas station tank. We've seen them use those before. I think it's kind of weird how they put so many pipes. This pipe has sort of a blockage on it, unsafe to go near it. This one, once again, all the rocks got pushed down there. Maybe the grater, the snow plow. Need an excavator to do all that. The question is, why didn't they just put a giant bridge here over the river? Why would they put a giant gas station pipe, a couple more giant pipes, and a series of smaller pipes further down the swamp when one bridge could just handle it all? Seems kind of dumb. We'll come back here when the water's a bit lower and safer in like a month or so once all the snow is done melting. Can you tell that this road is red? because of all the clay and rock they put on it. It's really pretty. Right here we have a pretty good flooded area. You can tell down there it was crossing the road. Looks like it might still be a little bit. Check it out, bright orange and yellow water. A couple feet above normal, making the edge of the road pretty soft. Here's the culvert, obviously crushed, and that's what's causing all the flooding. Is it going to be another plastic one? Not much coming out of it. That is sure a deep one. It's coming out like a little geyser. I'm going to roll up my sleeve. Going to reach in there because I'm curious. What kind of pipe is it? Nope, it's a metal one. It's probably rusted out on the bottom of it. Just a very old pipe and this is going to eventually cause problems. 
And there's another rock. You know, as I'm going around showing this stuff, I'm probably not showing more than 10% of it just because it's not always severe. But I just wanted to show you some of it. Like, take a look at this. This is very interesting. Look at that bright orange water. It's just trickling out of nowhere. It's probably coming from that water. Somehow underneath here is hollow. I can feel it. This is all hollow. This whole area is shaking from it. Look at that, it just disappears into a hole. Further down, it just gets much worse. This is probably the same water coming back out of this hole. Take a look at that. There's also some moose tracks at the top of the screen. This is very destroyed. This is all having to do with melting frost heaves combined with the drainage ditch not being dug out properly. And this goes a pretty long ways. Now this, if I was to drive through this, I would likely get stuck because what I'm walking in now is very soft. It's like quit sand. Yeah, look at that. The more you move it around, the more you sink in. This is actually kind of fun to step in. Look at that. Very fun to step in. See, it starts off as being pretty solid. It looks like I'm just slowly sinking. If I move around, it's grabbing me more and more. And I believe I'd probably lose my boots if I kept doing that right there. Now I gotta go over here into this water and clean myself off. I just stopped here at another pipe. We cannot see the exit. There's still a ton of snow there. But here's where it's coming in. Let's see if we can find it. I drove very close to the top of it. Looking for any current coming to it. Did not see it. Here we are. Perfect, but see how the bottom is gone? That could cause issues in the future. Look at how many logs fell off the log truck. And I'm surprised there's not even a big bump. Usually when you're driving this time of year, and you see a really big bump is when you find a bunch of logs that fallen off a truck. So I just stopped here. Again, a lot of moose tracks. It's nice to see that. Right here, I believe, is our culvert pipe. Why is it not coming out of the end? Well, just because of where it's coming out, this pipe is gonna need to be replaced. It's obviously got some kind of problem. Let's see where it's entering. The water's very high on this side because not enough is getting through. I don't even see it. It's most likely underneath all this stuff somewhere and only a little bit of water is able to seep through. Wow. You don't see trees with this big of a diameter coming out of here often. It smells really good. Just wanna go up and see what kind of tree is these. It's one gigantic pile. Look at the size of this moose track. This moose must be so big. Look at the size of that. Okay, it's obviously not a moose track, but it sure does look like one. Look at this gigantic overhang on this pile. Look at this, it's like a roof. It's like a roof under here. So this is what a moose track actually looks like. They're usually much smaller. So right here, this is a place we did a major unclogging last year. We put a trail camera up for weeks. Beavers never came back. And I doubt there's a blockage now. Yeah, it does, looks like they never came back. Never. Don't wanna fall. Pipe's got a little bit of damage, but relatively in good shape. 
compared to all the, compared to all the other pipes, I'm surprised how little this one's flowing. Probably oversized, which is a good thing. So this right here is definitely a temporary road. It's only open because people are using it for recreation, hunting, whatever. And see this water crossing over? You can tell it was a lot worse. This is the same body of water I just showed you. The pipe is oversized. Pipe's not down in the ground deep enough. All they really have to do is a couple dump trucks of fill to raise this up if it was to be permanent. But water levels usually aren't this high. It's the spring thaw. This won't be going on much longer. Look at that. There's a moose back there and it has a baby. Just scared him as I was driving by this logging camp. Right there. It's a cute moose. All right, that's the same moose. I just pulled down a little more after turning around. And I think this is the baby over here. Back over to the mother. You know, I wasn't gonna turn around and show this, but I turned around for the moose, so I will go and show this. Hear all that noise? Something's falling apart on the car. I don't know what it is. All right, this is very soft right here. So that right there is a logging camp where the moose is hanging out. And I just wanna show this river. This is amazing that this is never washed out. It's such a bottleneck for this river. This river is so big over here that all the woods right here is flooded. Let me show you. All of this is coming down here to cram underneath that bridge. Check it out, there's so much water here. This river bed is supposed to be so big, but it's being crammed under the bridge. There's a heck of a lot of moose tracks here, all using the bridge. That's a lot of flow down there, very swiftly moving. Some of the highest water levels I've seen here. Beautiful. The moose are still there on the way back. Look at that. What does it sound like I broke? Something's very loose on the back wheel. Imagine being able to still go snowmobiling in the month of May. That's kind of cool. Look at this. These snowmobile tracks you see going across the road are extremely recent. People are still using them on the snow on the edge of the road. That's pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna pull over right here. This is always a good spot. In the summertime, you'll see campers and other things people bring out parked here. There's always internet service here on top of this hill. So I'm gonna sit here, it's probably gonna take me four hours to edit this video, and if I'm not tired at that point, I will continue on my way. I'm gonna need to fill up with gas if I do. It's always nice to drive around at night. Seems like there's a good amount of moose in this area and I would like to see them. So I'll drive around a bit after dark. I'm right next to a big lake and it's completely frozen. I hope today's video was interesting, everyone. Thanks for watching and have a great day. All right, everyone, so I just finished editing. It took me about three hours. I had about two and a half hours worth of footage, and I was able to get it down to about an hour and 20 minutes. I cut out some of the boring stuff. I also time-lapsed a bunch of stuff. I also, um, there's a lot of empty space at the beginning and after a video. I just have to trim little pieces of it off, put a transition in there, and I'll include some good pictures at the end. So I just wanted to show you what my day is mostly about. Usually I just show the major unblockings, the major interesting things I put into videos. 
But today in yesterday's video, well, yesterday's video, part one of this, we did get two pretty cool unclogings that I did put inside it. And I posted separately for the people who don't want to really see this boring stuff. But I wanted you to see how often we stop the vehicle and actually don't find anything. Probably 95% of the time when I stop to look at a pipe, it is absolutely nothing. But we also showed you how we flag some things, especially yesterday. I showed you a lot more of our flagging, putting little ribbons up to warn of hazards in the road. Also, not necessarily hazards all the time, but mark pipes that are very plugged that I can't do. And also marking pipes that need to be replaced. So this right here is a volunteer job. Like I said yesterday, I was offered a job by the logging company. And yes, in that area, I did take it. But it's more of a volunteer job than anything else. That's why I have such freedom to do it. But it's a, it's a very mutual benefit. I'm helping out the logging company. I have permission to put up my ribbons. I showed the guy what I do. He absolutely loved the channel once he found out about it. And if I want, I can take a full-time paid job, he said. But for the time being, I am just doing this on my own time, doing my own stuff. I'm not actually getting paid for it, but I do have the code to the fuel island when I am in that area. Today, I was not in that area on that guy's property one bit, but I was yesterday in that video, and that's pretty cool. I hope today's video was also interesting. I'm about to get back on the road and look for some moose. I will probably include those moose clips if I do find any. I probably will see at least a couple moose. I'm going to drive around a few hours. It is now what time? Turn the car on for a second. It's not going to tell me the time until the computer starts, which takes like 10 seconds. Come on, what time is it? It's almost 10 o'clock. So, I'm going to move on. I'm not going to stay here the night. I don't care about the signal. I really don't. Who knows, maybe I'll loop back if I find nothing. I'm going to go, and while it's nighttime, I'm going to determine if there's certain roads I can go on tomorrow. I'm thinking they're going to be impassable. I know they're not plowed, and it seems like every single road that's not plowed is still impassable. But if it's impassable, there's a big 20-mile loop I'm going to do over the next hour or two. Then I'll come back here and sleep for the night, and then we'll head back into a whole different area of the logging forest. So this place is a... What do you call it? This is basically a giant 16 million acre tree farm. When they log it, they replant it. Typically, the forest is logged every 40 years for pulp wood. That can be used in a number of products from paper to press board. It also can be turned into wood chips for the wood burning power plants, which they consider renewable up here. If you want to consider that renewable, that's up to you. They also make plywood and other stuff out of wood chips up here. They also do have some lumber forest up here, but most of it is not. Lumber forest, typically they let grow about 70 years before cutting down and replanting. Every part of the ecosystem out here has been altered at some point. Every part of this forest just about has been cut down at some point and replanted. That's how it works out here. Thanks for watching, everyone.